for the holidays, some Collins equipment. A friend of mine, N7 MSR Mark, saw some of my videos where I was working on the old Johnsons and Nationals. He said, hey, I think that guy knows what he's doing, so I'm gonna give him some high-end Collins equipment to work on. Maybe take him up to that next level of repair. So that's what we're gonna do in this new video series of Collins Repair. So first we're gonna start with the KWM2 transceiver, then I'll move into the 32S2 transmitter, but the KWM2 has a whole bunch of cool problems that we'll work through. In this video, we're gonna concentrate on the neutralization that is not operating properly and it actually damaged a power supply. So let's go into the KWM2 and see what's causing that. And then later on, we'll cover other issues with that transceiver. Stay tuned. So as you know, the approach D-Lab always takes is the Mr. Obvious inspection. So let's take a look at this KWM2 and see if something rears its ugly head. Well, after some investigation, I believe I found the problem. I don't know if you can see this too well, but look at the neutralization capacitor down there. It's a crispy critter. It's all blacked, bubbled up. It's obviously been some arky sparky in going on. What fun that's going to be to change. Well, my dilemma is where do I find that original neutralization cap? I don't have anything like that on hand. So I poked around on the internet and I found this website. And here it is, a update neutralization kit for the Collins. The W7KSG was a guy that came up with it. He used to sell the kits, but unfortunately now he's SK. Out of business for good. But here it is, step-by-step -step procedures, showing you what screws to take out of the RF cage. There's that cap, right? So you scroll on down, nice pictures very detailed information and there is what you look like when you're done there's a new air variable cap so that is what I'm gonna do for the Collins KWM2 so I've made up my neutralization upgrade kit with things I had on hand luckily had this new old stock Johnson air variable 1.7 to 20 picofarad okay a 0 0.001 2kV cap, 470k resistor, and I made the insulator out of some phenolic to mount the cap. Now to make this, you would think, man, that's kind of tricky, pretty small. This only measures 5 eighths by 3 quarters of an inch. But if you look at your Collins, there's one of the same type caps right there at the rear. So you can use that as a template, just like that. So let's get the process started. I'm gonna follow those step-by-step -step instructions right off that website. So I've already started disassembling the RF cage. I gotta get the screws out from underneath, get the tubes out and expose that cap and get her stripped out and we'll put the new one in. All right, got the cage off. All the screws were pretty much accessible. I did have to use a very long bladed fine Phillips to get in there but she came right off no problems now I got to get these tubes out of the way tubes are out the cap is exposed It'll be pretty easy access at this point for doing the work so the cap is desoldered so let's get him out of here and check out how badly it arced I can already see 
some arcing to the chassis. So that was probably the resistance path that was screwing up that negative bias. And there it is. Mr. Charcoal, if you look right there, you can see some, it appears to be like corrosion. There's some white junk in here. Probably just some good arcing taking place between the ceramic here and the phenolic to ground. Had a little bit of a firework show, huh? So you see this coax coming up here underneath of it on the chassis. There's a lot of arky sparky evidence there. Okay, so I'm going to clean that up and then I'll inspect the coax and make sure that it's not damaged also. So there's our new cap in place, mounted, all the other components per the instructions have been removed and I'm ready to wire it up. But there's one other thing you want to take a look at. So here is a shaft of the neutralization cap poking out of the bottom of the RF cage, okay? You want to make absolutely sure, obviously, that that shaft doesn't hit any components, but you also want to make sure it's fully insulated from that chassis. In other words, you got to make sure it's centered up or guess what? It's going to arc. Well, there we go. The new assembly is installed. Now, before you get too crazy here, you need to take a meter and verify your work as well as a good visual inspection. Okay, so I'm going to take my own meter and do some quick checks. Number one, across the cap to make sure the plates aren't touching. And I'm just going to go to chassis to either side of that cap and make sure we have no shorts to ground. Looks good. So now is a great opportunity to clean this RF section, take a little bit of deox, especially to this nine pin socket, clean that. Make sure everything's cool before you put it back together because you really don't want to take it back apart. And also remember if there's been some arcing going on in here, more than likely your tubes have been damaged. So you might as well check them before you reinstall them. Well, the good news is the new neutralization system is working great. You can see the dip on my scope. And that's at 28.1 megahertz, according to the manual. It's looking great. Well, that resolves the problem with the neutralization circuit in the Collins KWM2. It's quite obvious that that old crusty arced up cap was causing the problem. Thank God for that free information on the web. It is really nice that we live in this information society that we have. So you have these things to reference. Okay. I may have eventually found that, but with the assistance of that website, it made it much quicker. So next we're going to go into the power supply circuits of KWM2. But we're going to take a mission accomplished on this problem. See you on the next part. Next up, why is my negative bias so low? And why, when I turn up the AF gain, does it do this? Tune in.